highly contentious hearing on whether to impose sanctions against Trump-allied lawyers played out in a Michigan court this week. A federal judge questioned whether the attorneys had done their due diligence before filing a lawsuit in federal court last year seeking to overturn the 2020 election results, calling some of the claims fantastical. So joining us now for a deeper dive into this is Washington Post political investigations and enterprise reporter Rosalind Helderman. Thank you so much for joining us. Rosalind, explain what happened during this nearly six-hour marathon hearing. Yeah, the federal judge uh, who heard this case last year uh, summoned a whole group of lawyers. I think there were nine of them, and they included some names that people probably have heard of, Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, uh, lawyers who had been trying to challenge the election last year uh, to this hearing and just asked them a series of really detailed, at times highly skeptical questions about uh, the legal filings they made in this case and how much uh, work and vetting and diligence they put into trying to figure out whether some of the material they put into court was actually uh, true, uh, because it's not allowed uh, for a lawyer to go into court and knowingly uh, tell the court about things that aren't true. Uh, and so this, this was all by way of deciding whether she is going to order that they be disciplined for filing this case. So is it likely the judge will decide to discipline these lawyers? And if she does, what are the penalties looking like? Well, certainly based off of her tone uh, at the hearing on Monday, uh, she is contemplating disciplining them. You know, she, she's certainly considering it very closely. Uh, we would expect a ruling on that uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, a month, six weeks, something like that. Uh, you know, the options, the easiest thing she could do is order these lawyers to pay uh, the legal fees of their opponents in this suit, which were um, state entities in Michigan and the city of Detroit. Uh, she could also impose a separate mon monetary penalty on them, a, a, a punishment via money. The other thing she can do is refer them uh, for proceedings to various other organizations, offering her recommendation that they be potentially disbarred. So obviously that would be the most serious uh, consequence for them, although she cannot personally, this judge uh, disbar them, she would have to uh, refer them to other entities, potentially with a recommendation that it happened. So attorney Lynn Wood actually posted clips of the hearing on the social media site Telegraph. I don't think you're allowed to do that, I would presume. What sanctions could he face? Well, this is a tricky thing because in the pandemic, a lot of court hearings that uh, used to not be put on the Internet have been broadcast so that people can uh, mm. participate remotely. Uh, the court was very clear uh, in in writing uh, associated with this hearing that you are not allowed to record or rebroadcast it. I I think a lot of people did, and he posted a clip, he says, that was recorded by someone else to uh, to Telegram, as you noted. Uh, there has been a motion, I believe, from the city of Detroit that he'd be held uh, in criminal contempt for that. Uh, he has already taken that down. Uh, I, I don't know whether the court will consider holding him in contempt. Uh, the rules in the pandemic are are a little tricky around this. Uh, it is it is a, a, an unusual thing to be broadcasting court hearings over YouTube anyway, uh, but the court could certainly scold him uh, and make clear that that was in violation of, of her directions. Will we see more hearings like this in other states where claims of election fraud are filed? Yeah, I would expect that we're going to see additional hearings like this. Uh, the process has already begun, uh, at least in Wisconsin. In the Wisconsin case, it's actually a, a lawsuit that was filed by the Trump campaign itself. And Donald Trump is one of the people uh, who the judge who has been asked by uh, by one side to be disciplined for the filing of the suit. Uh, there's a, an unrelated case in Colorado where there's a sanctions hearing this Friday. So I would expect to see a number of these around the country uh, as judges judges consider whether these lawsuits that were filed challenging the election were so frivolous uh, that lawyers should actually be uh, sanctioned for having filed them. So several states have actually opened criminal probes into the unfounded election fraud claims. Can you tell us where those investigations stand now? Sure. Uh, there was an investigation that was opened, I believe, in March in uh, in the state of Georgia uh, by a local prosecutor in Fulton County, uh, looking at the pressure that 
uh, then President Trump and some of his allies put on state officials there to overturn the results and whether uh, that actually amounted to uh, interference in the election. Um, that case, we understand, is ongoing. Uh, we were told that they've reached the end of the road of sort of voluntary participation with that case and are contemplating issuing subpoenas for documents and additional interviews. Uh, there was also just an announcement from uh, the Michigan Attorney General uh, that she has opened a case into to uh, figures who have been using claims of uh, the stolen election to raise money uh, in Michigan. Uh, this came after a legislative report in that state led by re Republicans uh, said that they found that those claims, particularly about one county in Michigan, were uh, so uh, debunked and frivolous uh, that they believed that people uh, perpetrating them as part of a, a fundraising appeal should be investigated by the, by the attorney general. Hmm. And I guess because of these baseless claims of election fraud, former New York City mayor and Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani, as you know, was suspended from practicing law in New York and Washington, D.C. Um, what are you hearing about his law license being permanently revoked? Could that happen? It could. Uh, that's probably the instance of these sort of efforts to hold people accountable that has gotten far enough, like the farthest down the road. Um, so uh, th there is a grievance proceeding underway in New York and under uh, New York rules. Uh, if an attorney is deemed a threat to the to the public, uh, their license can be temporarily suspended while the process moves forward. And so that's what has happened. Uh, a judge, uh, or it might have been a panel of judges, uh, found that there was incontrovertible evidence that he had told lies in court and to the public uh, in the pursuit of overturning the election, and that those lies are, are an ongoing threat to the public. And because of that, they said that his license should be suspended while this process moves forward. Uh, the process is confidential, uh, and it will go on for quite some time. But at the end, there could well be a decision to uh, disbar him permanently uh, in the state of New York, which would result in him also being disbarred in other places, like, as you noted, Washington, D.C. Fascinating reporting there, Rosalind. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.